NASCAR has completed day one of two of a test at Richmond Raceway, trying to do something new for a short track package, testing out different splitters. So that will be the main focus of this video. But first, let's talk about the Detroit Pistons. Yeah, that's right. The Detroit Pistons, the NBA team, we're going to talk about their entire season and why they're going to be bad again. Not really. Don't. I'm, I'm kidding. We're not actually going to. This is just so random that they have na they now have a connection to NASCAR. The Detroit Pistons will be teaming up with Ally to sponsor the number 48 at Michigan this week. Obviously, it makes sense. Uh, Michigan, this upcoming race, is going to be, you know, it's close to Detroit-ish. And it's it makes sense from that standpoint. Like, Detroit, in, it's in Michigan. Michigan is the race. It's kind of close to Detroit. It's just so random that an NBA team is sponsoring a NASCAR race car. Now, it's not the first time we've seen a professional sports team sponsor or co-sponsor a race car. Just a few weeks ago at the Chicago Street Course, we saw the Chicago White Sox on Ty Dillon's car. I think one year we saw the... Um, uh, I, uh, I'm going to vomit if I say the name. The uh, Philadelphia Eagles, they were on the 88. I think they were on Alex Bowman's car one year. Uh, who else has been on a car? Uh, we've seen colleges on cars, like we've seen the University of Michigan on a car, we've seen Penn State, uh, so yeah, it, it's not too uncommon, I guess, but it's just so, it's so random when it does end up happening, uh, but yes, uh, back to the main point of this video, I just wanted to point that out, that Detroit Pistons are gonna be on the 48 car this week, very random, anyways, back to this test for the new short track package, of course, as you all know, the short tracks and road courses have been struggling a little bit in terms of the racing product, I guess we can say, when it comes to the NASCAR Cup Series since the beginning of the next-gen car. Now, the intermediate tracks have been fantastic, actually, whether it's Charlotte, Vegas, Kansas, Homestead, the races have been great. But the short tracks and road courses, which used to be the better races... They've not done as well. They've made a couple of adjustments. They have uh, reduced the amount of downforce, I think, over the offseason. They reduced it by 30%. The horsepower is currently sitting at about 650, I believe. But other than that, no massive changes that I can remember. But they do want to improve the racing. So they're going to do some test or they've done some tests already and now they're doing another one at richmond with a different splitter let's look at the comparison this is the actual splitter um the one on the left if i if it's a screenshot of like the tweet then you can see the one on the left should be the one that they tested today the one on the right is the current splitter that is used in the cup series that was just used yesterday for the race the one on the left is being considered uh but yeah I'm not a tech expert. I'm not a car expert. I'm not a mechanic of any sort. I couldn't tell you anything about it. I can see the physical difference, uh, but someone out there that's smarter than me can explain it. And someone out there that is smarter than me is seeing this right now and saying, oh yeah, that's great. Thank you for putting the picture. If you're like me, you're like, what are these pictures going to do for me? I did it for the people who know what's going on. Uh, anyways, Here's an actual side-by-side -side comparison of the outside of the car. Once again, I couldn't tell you anything about it. I can see maybe one difference, but there's there's a quick thing. So there, there you go. Uh, there's the difference. There's a comparison. Just wanted to give you that first and foremost. Um, then there's some pictures of the cars on track. So yeah, get a good look at these cars. Get a good look at them. Uh, while you get a good look at these cars, I'm going to read off who was actually at the test. Uh, Christopher Bell, Harrison Burton, William Byron, Justin Haley with Colleg, not Rick Ware Racing yet, uh, Ryan Priest and Noah Gregson. Those were the six cars in the test today. So uh, let's get to the fun stuff. Let's get to all the details. So NASCAR competition officials have scheduled a two-day test of a potential new Cup Series rules configuration for short tracks and road courses for possible use in competition in 2024. Test days are set for Monday and Tuesday after this weekend's events at Richmond Raceway. A, front, a new front splitter, informally labeled as an up-down splitter internally and called a lift splitter among some drivers, is the key aerodynamic component to be tested. 
Six Cup Series teams, as we just talked about, the ones that are in it, are scheduled to participate at the 0.75 mile track with multiple 30 lap runs scheduled for the group both days. The two day test was originally scheduled for earlier in the month after the race weekend at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, but a forecast for inclement weather prompted competition officials to postpone the test, moving it to Richmond. Uh, so yeah, in conclusion, uh, this is not going to be implemented this year. I think that's one of the big things. You don't want to make a massive change in the middle of the season that could potentially be championship shifting, especially in this dumb format uh, where it's a one race shootout. And if that is like the one race that we use the new short track package and one team who kind of just like Ryan Newman in 2014, if they do that kind of thing, make it into the championship four with zero wins and like five top fives. If someone makes it into the championship four like that, then they do the new short track package and that team ends up like dominating the race and wins the championship. Oh boy, uh, the response would be something. So I think they want to wait till 2024 uh, to implement these changes so you can have the full season to adjust, full season to um, you know, mess with it, to know what's going on, have the off season to work on it. So uh, good call on that if you ask me. Uh, as for everything else, yeah, I was supposed to be in New Hampshire a couple weeks ago. Now it's here at Richmond, or not here, but it's at Richmond, uh, where the race just was yesterday for the Cup Series, where Prosper Texas Zone, Chris Busher won. Um, but yeah, so that that's basically it from that standpoint. That's the general information. Now into the more detailed stuff. Dr. Eric Jacuzzi, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced that way, NASCAR Vice President of Vehicle Performance, said July 13th that the modified splitter had shown positive results in the wind tunnel testing in the, in the computational, probably pronounced it wrong, fluid dynamics or the CFD computer modeling. Jacuzzi called the effect of turbulent or dirty air a problem as old as time in racing and physics. For trailing cars but said that the downward sloping angle of the new splitters miss midsection uh, produced data that showed a trailing car gaining downforce in traffic instead of losing it an effect that should promote passing which is what we want to see you're a car in traffic trying to make downforce you're always going to be kind of worse if somebody's in front of you right it's just you can't make that vehicle disappear jacuzzi said so we said, instead of fighting that battle that we've been fighting forever, why don't we take a different approach and actually make lift in that section of the car that has weight coming into it? And then when that lift goes away, essentially we balance out and act as if the car, if that car in front isn't there, and that's what we've been able to achieve in CFD and in the wind tunnel. So uh, essentially, I'm going to try to put this in like super simple terms if I'm understanding this correctly. So when you're behind a car in turbulent, dirty air, it's harder to get downforce, right? Downforce is what makes the car turn. It keeps the car on the ground. It makes you turn quicker. Um, so with more downforce, you're able to turn the car better. But when you're in the turbulent air, when you are behind a car, you are, you're, all, you're not going faster. You're not going through the turn faster because you have less downforce. So it's a really simplify it into like a sentence being behind someone makes you turn slower got it cool um next point being that now they're trying to essentially give the car behind more downforce than the car in front i think so basically the car behind has a better opportunity or it makes it easier for them to pass uh, it's, it's an interesting concept. Can't say I've ever heard of this one before. I'm sure it's happened before. Maybe if not, then all right then, but more down for more downforce for the car behind will make things interesting, especially if you're taking or reducing downforce in a sense, uh, to the front car. I think if anything, it's more evening it out, but I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's the simplified version of it. There you go. Uh, the package to be tested at Richmond takes a different tr tack with the next-gen car's underbody designed to mitigate the lingering effect of dirty air and provide more level aerodynamic footing for cars in traffic. Jacuzzi said no ch changes are planned at the test for the rear spoiler, which was reduced from a 4-inch height to a 2-inch blade for those type tracks before the season. Teams will also test with and without a filler panel, which would cover some of the bracing material aft of the new splitter. 
Two ride height settings will also be tested, one with a maximum of three inch ground clearance and the other open to any ride height. Oh my gosh, I'm sure I showed it in the pictures, but Harrison Burton's car looked like a boat. When they got to freely do whatever ride height they wanted, look at this boat that Harrison Burton had. My goodness. That, that's the gist of it. There you go. Uh, so they've made a lot of changes to the car, oh, even since its inception, since they started building it. But even once it got on track in 2022, in February of 2022, they have made tweaks, they've made changes. Obviously, we saw a big safety change made this year after the crash between Kyle Larson and Ryan Priest at Talladega. That was a very necessary, very right now needs to happen change because, well, if that crash happens again, it happens on the driver's side, problems. Someone could get hurt, someone could die. So when it comes to safety changes, those need to happen now. When it comes to performance changes, when it comes to the entertainment value changes, those can be pushed to next year. Um, so I think it's a good call to do that. As for everything else, yeah, as I said at the beginning of this video, it's been no question, the short tracks and road courses have struggled under the next gen car. Tracks that we usually are always so excited for have not been as exciting. You know, Martinsville is usually one of the top tracks in terms of fan enjoyment, Bristol and you know, the Martinsville fall race last year was a fun one, especially with the Hail Melon. The Bristol night race, it was all right, but they weren't as good as they usually are. Look at the 2021 Bristol night race. That was a thrilling race. You know, lots of leaders, like three guys fighting for the win at one point uh, until the Elliott Harvick thing happened. Uh, you look at Martinsville any year fantastic racing yeah every once you had those every once in a while martin shrex jr would lead 400 laps um and you had that one year where they did the 550 package with the high spoiler and the high downforce and <sighs> those races 2019 to 2019 martinsville races were horrible absolutely horrible but they fixed it okay and that's what i think is happening here once again the races were nowhere near that bad they were a huge step down, don't get me wrong, but, you know, there's still been, a, every once in a while, a short track that has been good. Uh, so I think the fact that they are willing to make changes, willing to test things out to make changes shows NASCAR is listening. Um, but as for everything else, I'm trying to think. Uh, I, I had a point somewhere in there, but basically uh, they're going to try to make these changes. As for, like, why they won't change the horsepower, uh, let's see here. Bob Bob Pockers has been tweeting a lot about this, so I'm just going to read some of these off for you. Uh, they have said they feel the current horsepower is more attractive to potential new manufacturers. Uh, obviously, none have committed. With current engine rules, it would take time and money to develop parts and pieces to last for two races. Not saying it can't be done, but not an easy fix. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, as for a new manufacturer, dude, I've been... I... I, I don't have hope right now. Uh, very, It very well could happen in the long term, but as of like right now, no, I don't see it happening. Who would it be? I, I don't know. I just said I didn't think it was happening, so why would I start guessing? <laughs> uh, but uh, Eric Jacuzzi, after the test, he said that they saw some of what they wanted today, but not a grand slam. Potentially could make an arrow change to test Tuesday, but would be after they go through the planned tire compound changes. Test today included the softer, loud, and tire. So yeah, today's test was mainly the splitter, uh, testing that new lift splitter, but tomorrow will be more focused on the tires, the different tire compounds that Goodyear is using. So let's see what's next. I already showed you the picture. I think the drivers that are talking to the media currently. So I was going to do a video on that tomorrow, what the drivers had to say, and also some other small news. Uh, but yeah, the drivers, what they said, I'll do that video tomorrow. Yeah, no, I, I don't have any other things, no other uh, time cheats or no other data, Not even not even a lot of video of it. That video I showed you at the beginning, uh, that was from the NASCAR social media. So, I mean, that was about the extent of it. There's been a lot of pictures posted by media members, but there was no stream, no video uh, of the test. I think it was closed to the public even. So I think they're trying to keep it somewhat private uh obviously they've got pictures out there they got people reporting the drivers will start talking about it here in a few minutes or hours or day at most but 
we'll see. We'll see what they end up implementing. Uh, but yeah, the, another thing I forgot to mention is from Kelly Crandall. Uh, she posted the pictures of the splitters as well, said the drivers didn't feel a difference and said the changes weren't enough. NASCAR's Eric Jacuzzi said they didn't see what they expected from models. So yeah, it uh, should be interesting to see if they end up going with this new splitter, what adjustments they make for tomorrow, uh, and to see you know how long this testing does. Do they do more tests in the fall? Will they do some over the off season? And will they eventually implement a new splitter? What other changes will be made to make the short tracks and road courses more fun, more entertaining, making the racing better? So thanks for watching this video. I know it was a long one. We talked about a lot of details that I'm not 100% sure what they mean. Uh, but yeah, uh, we got more news on this tomorrow, I'm sure, with the test. As I said, the drivers are about to start saying stuff here in the next... I don't know. It said they were talking to drivers currently, but I'll do that video tomorrow whenever they start saying something, if there's anything extremely interesting. Other small news. Uh, I told you about the Pistons. Uh, SVG confirmed that he's looking for a NASCAR ride in 2024, like the words came out of his mouth. Uh, but yeah, wait for more details to come out on that. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. There, We've already done some videos on that and him wanting to go to NASCAR full-time in 2024. So uh, it would have just been a repeat video, so I opted not to do that. Uh, but we'll see when the reports and rumors start coming in about where he would go uh, here at a later date. But thanks again for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. I'll see you guys at least tomorrow uh, for whatever updates come with this tire test, with this uh, splitter test to see what changes and differences there are.